Smoke Dragon. You guys know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is? Yep. So I've always held him in pretty high, and I find him interesting. I watch his uh, TED Talks specials on Netflix. I try to, if he's on a podcast, I'll watch him. Yep. Uh, but I've been really, for some reason, stewing on him lately. Because I've not heard any argument against him. And if you listen to him talk on some of these podcasts, he's kind of a, comes off as a pompous asshole sometimes. Oh, yeah. And at first you think, well, if you're like the smartest dude on the planet, Maybe he earned it. But then nobody's really arguing or fighting back against him that I can see. You try don't to, see like, much try to like, back check him and catch Yeah, him. like, hey, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I call bullshit. I don't see that very often. Right. So I did a little bit of research, and it's one of the, some president, I don't know, Clinton or somebody, appointed him to NASA to be the head of some sort of research. Mm-hmm. He's now over a museum of astronomy. I don't know. Okay. Somewhere. It doesn't matter. But, so the topic says, is he that great of an astrophysicist or is he just that great of a personality? Like, I, I'm, I'm, tr- I'm, I'm starting to question whether or not he really is as smart as we think or if he's just hoodwinked everybody and, <laughs> you know, he's just got us all fooled. Well, real quick, I did, I, I did some, you know, over the break, I looked at some stuff too and I actually just said, what, what's his actual education? Like, what is his level of education? And it says he's got a PhD in astrophysics. Oh, sure. Astrophysics from Columbia University, graduated in 91. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he is a, uh, like, he is a uh, really smart guy, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't know what what was, like, what what are some, like, big, uh, like, discoveries that he's made. Uh, Yes, that's the thing. I don't know that he's actually got a whole lot to hang his hat on. If he's, like, I don't know if he's made his own groundbreaking. The only thing it says here is, as a grad student, he worked to understand how stars and galaxies form and change over time. His discoveries about the process of star and galaxy formation and evolution have furthered our understanding of okay. how the universe actually really works. So that would be something credible, because that's what I was looking for, is just what was his big break that made him the guy you had to go to to, to you know, get the skinny on that sort of thing. He, it also says that he uh, changed the world, which I feel is pretty bold. Sure. Uh, contributing to the research that established Pluto as actually a dwarf planet. He was on the council for NASA and played a large role ensuring that the Hayden Planetarium would remain intact. So Hayden Planetarium is where he's the, whatever his title is now, like yeah. uh, HDIC, uh, the Hayden H-D-I-C. Planetarium. Yeah. I said museum, but yeah, yeah, Planetarium is what he's over. Makes an ungodly amount of money there every year. Right. Isn't that funny how that scra- back scratch works? Yeah, like, oh, we got to keep it open. We should shut it down. Maybe we shouldn't, and then pay me like $10 million a year or something. <clears throat> Here's the problem. A year, whatever. Here's the problem. I don't mean to rain on anybody's parade, but this is the problem that has developed that you put these people on a pedestal. Not you. and You know what I'm saying that in general. Yeah, 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 yeah. You put these people on a pedestal that they can't be questioned <laughs> or they're above reproach, and they're just part of the – on both sides, the governmental swamp that make livings off of American tax dollars when in really nobody gives two shits what he's done because mm-hmm. it doesn't affect you or I, but he collects an absorbent salary to be this talking head that has his own political agenda and his own agenda of what he wants to do. I think he did like stay a relevant. $10 million deal with Netflix to do a series of specials. Yeah. So that on top of, and it's not, so I think it, it's like a million a year to be this. But I think these whatever, guys, they but, think they become above reproach. Yeah. That's how and I, that's why I love like a Joe Rogan who will have anybody and everybody on to discuss. Because obviously Joe Rogan is of a level of intelligence. But a lot of times you find out when you start questioning these people, they crumble or they just get mad and storm off or it turns into say, an argument. Have you seen him on Rogan? No, because I don't like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, okay. I, he could get hit by a bus tomorrow, and it wouldn't affect gotcha. my day one bit. It's not deGrasse either. I don't care. It's deGrasse. 
Yeah. Want to know some fun facts about him? Sure. <laughs> he once considered becoming an exotic dancer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he hosts his own podcast also. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey. Star Talk. You, hey, you have two things in top. Star Talk? Top. Is that what it's called? I believe so. You have two things in common he with him. He also yeah. requested and got the night sky changed in the movie Titanic. They must have had the stars all screwed up, so he had to oh, change it in the God. movie. You don't watch the Titanic because, oh, the stars, look at those. That's not factually correct. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I think he's smart for sure. but like, I'm, I, not, I'm not discrediting his level of intelligence, but I'm just wondering if he's if his everything he's cracked gives up rise to, be, right? to what has done. No, mm-hmm. he's a figure of people that put him on this pedestal above reproach and I don't know. I just don't stand it very well because it just is what it is. Star Talk. That's nuts, man. How many followers does he have or subscribers to Star Probably Talk? not as much as this brilliant podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. I think he uh I think he's legit, but oh, two point seven million followers. Yeah, that's wild. Two point eight. Hmm. Almost as good as us. I think uh I think he's also his voice is used in uh, some rap albums that I've heard of. Really? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's weird. Yeah, I don't know what makes. Do you? It's just it's actually probably little stuff like that, like gimmicky things that make me think. Is that what's more important? If if you if you, if you're doing the gimmicky thing, I guess it could be just because it's fun. You have the opportunity to do it, but are you relying on the gimmicky thing because you can't back up? Right, what yeah. Got you to the gimmick, right? Yeah. So I don't know, like, like it's the just, actual research side of it. You're looking for the guy that rolls his sleeves up and is actually making discoveries. So his his he mentions him lots of times. He'll reference, and I can't think of the guy's name, but he did the small blue dot speech. He was the first one to do the show that Neil deGrasse Tyson does now. Um, Carl Sagan? Carl Sagan. Yeah. And I feel like Carl... He was recruited. It said that deGrasse Tyson was actually recruited by Carl Sagan like while deGrasse Tyson was in high school. Right. So he must have been... You know, scratching at some shit, some pretty big shit early on, too, when, when, when Neil was young. But the thing is, the more, the longer I live, the more I see, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, deceit, I think. Mm, like you can pull the, wheel, the, the wool over somebody's eyes. Somebody pulls you under their wing, and then you earn that from them and that respect how much is that person holding you up to that standard once they've decided internally that you are there Mm. and then if you're that young when you get pulled into it are you just riding on the coattails oh yeah yeah, of the of the recommendations yeah or did you actually somewhat what you some would consider consider like brainwashed Yeah, yeah, Yeah. yeah 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 carl sagan was a popular public advocate of skeptical science inquiry and the scientific method. He pioneered the field of exobiology and promoted the search for the cosmos. That's wild, huh? Mm-hmm. His I, famous quote was, a universe that is unknowable is no fit place for a thinking being. Uh, come again? A universe that is unknowable is no fit place for a thinking being. Doesn't even make sense. How you figure sure it does? If that's why thinking people are always trying to expand their knowledge of what's out there, because if it's unknowable, it's unfit for a thinking person. So if you're a thinking person, you need to make it knowable, so that you fit there. And until that is done, you're going to keep thinking and striving for more. Right. I think you got to do a lot of drugs to make up shit like that. I don't think so, man. You're just not on the same uh, intellectual and educational level as these people. And it's okay to admit that you're not. Right? I wouldn't say educational level. He is a PhD. I have a JD. We're both doctors. Esquire. 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 
Yeah, anyway. I don't know. But, I mean, here's the thing. The, I don't think Neil deGrasse Tyson's a sham. I don't think he's a sham. I don't. But he does a lot of that stuff out there that's kind of Bill Nye the Science Guy. Right. But when he nerds out on them TED Talks and stuff like that about stars and... Like, the guy's gas- way smarter than me, and I recognize that. Yeah, yeah, that's but what But is I was he, getting. like, Stephen Hawking smart? Like, I don't know. I, 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 I'm I, just curious. Well, we can talk about Stephen Hawking. Was he really that smart, though? <laughs> if not, somebody behind him. Or did that computer just talk to him when he wanted to talk to him? Or when he went to those islands. <laughs> Have you seen those TikTok? <laughs> no. oh, oh, some of the meme work on those is great. Phenomenal. Uh, I don't, here's the thing, though. If it's something that a lot of people don't, and I think this goes to your point, Dave. If it's something that a lot of people don't know something about, or care to know something about. You could be of average intelligence, but if it's something people don't know about, then how sure. do you really know? Right. When you compare titans of the industry. No. Oh, and you yeah. don't see these guys sitting down to debate each other on this, that, or another, because no. it would ruin it would ruin this. And that's the only career thing I can't built. figure out. Like you don't see anybody really questioning his statements and maybe it's so is that because it's so well known in that community like maybe he didn't come up with it or is it because he is so well renowned in that community because he can back it up or is it just nobody else in the community gives a shit because he's a movie star and he's not an astrophysicist (laughs) and those folks are more critical thinkers well think about think about the Heart, like a current event situation, the ouster of Harvard's president. When you look at the plagiarism that's alleged to have oh, occurred, yeah. here is somebody that has made it to the pinnacle, and there's arguments on both sides of this coin, depending on your political beliefs. But let's say one of the most recognized financial institute, not financial institutions, educational, educational institutions with, I think, one of the largest endowments in the world made it to the top, but then all of a sudden when you piss off a certain segment of the population that starts digging and you start to realize, well, just the plagiarism is unreal, then that shatters that. You know what I mean? So do you do you keep your enemies even closer to where your people that ride your coattails, it's all a house of cards? Yeah. And if you piss one of them off and you say, well, you know that TED talk that he gave back in Vegas in 2022? He's full of shit. That was all my work. He just took it for his own. You know, and that's the world of non disclosure agreements. And look at how many engineers, like, Gag let's, say, orders. let's say you develop a product for Kimball Electronics. Yeah, you, anything I do you, there or eg- on their equipment is there. Exactly. Think about all those engineers at 3M. Think about how many products we run into every day that are 3M. And it was some engineer that got paid their engineer salary while 3M made billions of dollars off of it. Mm -hmm. That happens every day because these people go to work for them, they discover something, and then it's like, oh, well, you might have discovered it, but it's actually mine. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I think is a bad thing about academia is we look at higher education as a, a possibility to be an expression of thought and debate and discuss and discourse discourse Hmm. that's not right what am i thinking of discourse yeah i think you're right yeah d-i-s-c-o-u-r-s-e but it's really not it is it's a chokehold or a choke point of ideologies depending on where you go to school that makes that suffer it just i mean that's where a lot of people say the Higher academia in this country is a fraud. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Think about that deep thought for you. Mm. I don't know if I can get any deeper. <laughs> Been there. Yeah. Been real. Better tie a two by four on your ass 